follicular phase. The phases of proestrus and estrus may collectively be referred to as the follicular phase. During the follicular phase, four significant events take place. They are gonadotropin release from the anterior lobe of the pituitary, follicular preparation for ovulation, sexual receptivity, and ovulation. Gonadotropin release is controlled by ovarian estrogen and hypothalamic GnRH. The follicular phase is governed by the hypothalamus, the anterior lobe of the pituitary and the ovary, through the secretion of estradiol in the absence of progesterone. This is also known as the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis. Early in the follicular phase, GnRH pulse frequency begins to increase because of low progesterone, thus causing FSH and LH to be secreted from the anterior lobe of the pituitary. These gonadotropins stimulate ovarian follicles to secrete estradiol, a positive feedback on the neurons of the hypothalamic surge center occurs, and the GnRH neurons secrete a burst of GnRH. Later in the follicular phase, Follicle secrete inhibin that causes a negative feedback on FSH secretion from the anterior lobe of the pituitary. The relationship between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the ovary during the follicular phase can be also shown in the primary steps leading to the preovulatory LH surge. First, the decrease in progesterone or the P4 from corpus luteum undergoing lotulysis stimulates increase in GnRH release from the hypothalamus. Second, increased GnRH from hypothalamus stimulates FSH or LH release from anterior pituitary gland, stimulating follicle formation and development to secrete estradiol. Estradiol is increased to threshold level to stimulate preovulatory LH surge leading to ovulation. Lastly, later in the follicular phase, follicles secrete inhibin to decrease production of FSH, increasing likelihood that a specific follicle becomes dominant by preventing the development of neighboring follicles. Previously, we have seen where does GnRH is released from and the stimuli for the FSH and LH release. Thus, the hypothalamus plays an obligatory role in regulating estrous cycle because it produces gonadotropin releasing hormone that is responsible for stimulating the release of the gonadotropins FSH and LH. The tonic and surge centers in the hypothalamus control GnRH release. The tonic center is responsible for basal secretion of GnRH. The tonic center secretes a small episodes of GnRH in a pulsatile fashion similar to a dripping faucet over a substantial period of time, maybe days to weeks. The episodic secretion is continuous throughout reproductive life. The surge center, also known as the preovulatory center, is responsible for the preovulatory release of GnRH that stimulates a surge of LH, causing ovulation. The surge center secretes basal levels of GnRH until it receives the appropriate positive stimulus known to be a threshold concentration of estradiol in the absence of progesterone. When the estradiol concentration in the blood reaches a certain level, the preovulatory center is turned on and a large quantity of GnRH is released that stimulate the anterior pituitary to secrete a preovulatory surge of LH. This is because the surge center is sensitive to positive feedback, secreting high amplitude, high frequency pulses of GnRH like a gushing wide open faucet in a relatively short period after estradiol reaches a threshold concentration. The following should be noted. Low estradiol reduces the degree of firing by GnRH neurons in the preovulatory center. However, when estradiol levels are high, the preovulatory center responds dramatically by secreting large quantities of GnRH. This stimulation in response to rising concentrations of estradiol is referred to as positive feedback. During the middle part of the cycle, when estradiol is low and progesterone is high, there is negative feedback by progesterone on the preovulatory center, thus reducing frequency of GnRH pulses. Follicular dynamics is controlled by FSH and LH and involves both growth and death of these follicles. Follicular dynamics is the process of follicular growth and degeneration. 
Antral follicles are fluid-filled spaces that appear between the granulosa cells and coalesce into a single cavity called the antrum. Antral follicles of various sizes develop in response to vasal levels of FSH and LH. Large follicles almost always can be seen on the ovaries in species where only a single follicle ovulates, like the cow and the mare. The dynamics of antral follicles involve four processes. These are recruitment, selection, dominance, and atresia. Recruitment This is a phase of follicular development in which a cohort or group of small antral follicles begins to grow or emerge and secrete estradiol. Most of the recruited follicles undergo atresia. Selection Following recruitment, a group of growing follicles that have not undergone atresia are selected. Selected follicles may become dominant or they may undergo atresia. Dominance as the selected follicles proceed toward dominance, they continue to secrete increasing amounts of estradiol as well as the hormone inhibin, atresia. It is the degeneration and resorption of several follicles and their ovules prior to the maturation and release of one ovule from a healthy follicle. Atresia Atresia is defined as degeneration and resorption of several follicles and their ovules prior to maturation. The process of atresia involves more follicles than the process of dominance. Over 90% of ovarian follicles undergo an irreversible degenerative process called atresia. In follicular context, atresia refers to the closure or disappearance of the antrum that accompanies the degenerative changes. This illustration shows the follicular waves that occurs during estrous cycle in the cow. The first follicular wave occurs either as progesterone is rising or during peak progesterone secretion. During metestrus, which is days 2 to 5 in the cattle, a group of follicles is recruited. However, these follicles are not exposed to the appropriate endocrine conditions for continued development and undergo atresia within the ovary. Neither complete follicular development nor ovulation can occur under progesterone dominance. The dominant follicle of each wave will ovulate if luteolysis occurs. After luteolysis, follicles of either the second or third wave develop into a dominant pre-ovulatory follicle. One or more of these follicles will mature into the pre-ovulatory and dominant follicle. It must be emphasized that the endocrine condition for final follicular development will exist only after luteolysis and subsequent decline in progesterone that removes the negative feedback on the hypothalamus. Additionally, it's critical to understand that different species and within species have different number of follicular waves during a particular cycle. Ultrasonography is among the most important imaging techniques used in reproductive research and diagnostics. It is used to describe the phenomenon of follicular dynamics in cow. It can be used in pregnancy diagnosis, fetal aging and growth, description of change in ovarian structures, detection of fetal abnormalities and diagnosis of the presence of twins in mares, cows, and women. Its primary advantage is minimal invasiveness and can be used without surgery. With ultrasonography in large animals on a daily basis, one can determine how populations of antral follicles change in size and numbers over time. This illustration shows an ovary showing small sized follicles on the surface of ovaries and their respective ultrasonographic images. The photo shows that the ovary contains small antral follicles. More follicles appear in the ultrasonographic image than in the photograph because the ultrasound imaging allows observation of the follicles beneath the surface of the ovary. The black images in the ultrasound are generated by the fluid field cavities and the gray to white images are generated by dense tissue like the ovarian stroma themselves. This illustration describes FSH concentrations during the course of one estrocycle in the cup. FSH secretion followed by estradiol secretion occurs during metestrus even though progesterone is high. Antral follicles secrete estradiol in response to FSH. They also secrete inhibin and this causes FSH secretion to drop. After lutolysis, progesterone decreases. As a consequence, FSH and estradiol increase dramatically. 
This illustration describes the LH pulse frequency changes that occur during the cycle. LH pulse frequency is low during metastrus with 6 pulses per day and diestrus with 3 pulses per day. After litholysis, progesterone secretion decreases and the negative feedback on GnRH is lifted and the pulse frequency of LH increases dramatically to about 1 pulse every hour. This frequent pulse of LH drives final follicular development and ovulation. FSH and LH are controlled or regulated differently. FSH secretion is controlled by estrogen and inhibin that is secreted by growing follicles. They exert negative feedback on the secretion of FSH by the anterior pituitary. LH secretion is regulated by GnRH pulses that control the pulse's frequency of LH. Almost all follicles undergo atresia during the cycle. This is because they lack sufficient number of LH receptor on the granulosal cells to fully respond to LH in the final stages of growth and maturation. Only those follicles with threshold number of LH receptors will enter the final stages of dominance and gain pre-ovulatory status. The figure summarizes the relationship between FSH and LH with regard to recruited, selected, dominant, and pre-ovulatory follicles. In summary, the recruited and selected follicles are FSH-dependent, while more mature selected follicles, dominant, and pre-ovulatory follicles are LH-dependent. During follicular development, LH binds to LH-specific membrane receptors located on the cells of the theca interna of the developing follicle. The net effect is conversion of cholesterol to testosterone. Testosterone then diffuses out of the cells of the theca interna and enters the granulosal cells. The granulosal cells contain receptors for FSH. When FSH binds to its receptor, it causes the conversion of testosterone to estradiol. This two-cell, two-gonadotropin pathway continues to function until levels of estrogen increases to a threshold that induces the pre-ovulatory LH surge. The primary target for estradiol is the reproductive tract tissue. The mucosal epithelium of the female tract responds dramatically to estrogens depending on the specific organ within the tract. The major effects of estradiol on the reproductive tract are increased blood flow or hyperemia, leukocytosis, genital swelling or edema, change in tissue electrical conductivity, increased mucosa or secretion, initiation of uterine gland growth, and elevated myometrial tone. Stage of the estrus cycle in some species like dog, cats, and rodents can be diagnosed by performing vaginal lavage by flushing fluid back and forth within the vagina and then removing a portion of the fluid. Estradiol induces reproductive behavior. Elevated estradiol coupled with low progesterone induces profound behavioral changes in the female. The female becomes sexually receptive and copulation occurs during the follicular period. It is crucial and must understand that ovulation and the estrus period are closely related but the ovulation comes first. The female stands to be mounted by the male as the culmination of estrus behavior. Ovulation is the result from a cascade of events starting with the LH surge. So what is LH surge? LH surge is where the luteinizing hormone levels increases prior to ovulation. The LH surge signals the ovary that an egg is ready to be released from the ovary. Simply means, the ovulation is about to start. Because it initiates a sequence of metabolic processes that result in ovulation, the pre-ovulatory surge of LH is crucial. The complex process of ovulation necessitates the deliberate amputation of follicular tissue. Histamine and prostaglandin E2 are hypothesized to regulate hyperemia or the locally high blood flow at the tissue level. After receiving an injection of the LH-like hormone, human chorionic gonadotropin or HCG, blood flow to the ovary has been found to rise sevenfold. Additionally, the dominating follicles have increased local blood flow. The theca interna becomes edematous in conjunction with its local hyperemia as a result of enhanced vascular permeability brought on by histamine. Before ovulation, the dominant follicle starts to secrete progesterone. The cells of the theca interna 
start producing progesterone instead of testosterone after the LH surge. This transition initially only uses a modest amount of locally produced progesterone at the follicular level. This localized increase in progesterone is necessary for ovulation because progesterone promotes the theca internecells production of the cutting enzyme, specifically the enzyme collagenase. Prostaglandin E2 is expected to direct the re-restructuring of the follicle. Prostaglandin E2 is thought to activate a substrate known as plasminogen. Plasminogen activators turns plasminogen into plasmin. The active enzyme involved in tissue remodeling is called plasmin. It is present throughout the body and is not specific to the ovary. Plasminogen assists in remodeling the follicle into a corpus luteum by assisting in the dissolution of the corpus hemorrhagicum coagulum. Ovulation is brought about by first, the elevated blood flow, second, the breakdown of connective tissue, and lastly, the ovarian contractions. Some species require copulation before ovulation can occur. There are two different types of ovulators in men. These are referred to as reflex or induced ovulators and spontaneous ovulators. Ovulation in spontaneous ovulators occurs on a regular basis without the need for copulation. Ovulation completely results from hormonal alterations in the spontaneous ovulator. The woman, the sow, the ewe, the mare, and the cow are some examples of spontaneous ovulators. Ovulation must be stimulated in the reflex or induced ovulator in order for it to take place in the vagina and or in the cervix. Reflex ovulators include animals like the rabbits, felids, ferrets, and minks. With the exception of the rabbit, induced ovulators either copulate frequently or for a reasonably lengthy period of time. These copulation patterns guarantee that sufficient brain stimulation will occur leading to ovulation. Reflex ovulators in females can be artificially stimulated by electrical or mechanical stimulation. The tactile stimulus brought on by copulation is transformed into action potential, which pass through the cervix and or vagina and eventually reach the spinal cord. The hypothalamus is innervated by afferent pathways. The increased firing of hypothalamic neurons as a result of the heightened frequency of action potentials in the sensory nerves in the vagina and cervix leads to a pre-ovulatory surge of GnRH. The cascade of events leading to ovulation is triggered by the release of GnRH which in turn triggers the production of LH. There are four phases of oocyte maturation. First is the mitotic division of primordial germ cells or prenatal where the oogenesis begins with the development of primordial germ cells in the embryo. Primordial germ cells divided mitotically into oogonia. Oogonia divided into primary oocytes that enter the first meiotic prophase. The next phase is the nuclear arrest or dicotine. At the end of meiotic prophase, the nuclear material is arrested. This arrest is called dicate, a form of nuclear hibernation. Next is the cytoplasmic growth phase. At puberty, the female begins to cycle and ovulate. The LH surge allows the meiotic arrest to be lifted in the first meiotic division takes place. Lastly is the resumption of meiosis. This division results in the formation of secondary oocyte that possesses the first polar body. The first polar body contains one half of the genetic material. Around the time of ovulation, the second polar body is voided and the ootid is formed. Fertilization occurs slightly before or slightly after the second meiotic division. At fertilization, the sperm delivers the other half of the genetic material and the zygote is formed. At this time, the zygote contains a male and female pronucleus. When the pronuclei fuse, early embryo development begins.